What is good? We're back with a fresh crack. We got your boy Casey over here. We're ready to roll. We got Austin Abbott over there. Austin Ricky Pearsall Abbott. Ready to roll. What's going on, man? Oh, How you doing? Not much. Fired up today. We got some league winners for your pleasure. We got a, a couple of veterans and, a, and two rookies that we're going to dish on today. Austin, you wanna you wanna kick us off, or you want me to start? I think we got we got a fun little lineup of guys. I don't yeah, think man, there'll be too I'll, much I'll, hate I'll, on them. I'll kick things off. All right. I'll, uh, I'll start the yap, and let's talk about let's talk about a big dog, the most physically imposing, the greatest quarterback in NFL history, Anthony Richardson. That's uh, where we're yapping Homer. about today. Homer, <laughs> dude. No, I think it's a great I, choice look, for a league winner, both single or super flex. So I love that. I got to be honest, man. Is there one person out there? I, oh, I'm sure there is. How do you not root for Anthony Richardson? Like, how, how how are you not excited to, one, watch him play, and two, how are, how are you not rooting for Anthony well, Richardson? You man? probably I, talk so much shit that you have to just double down and <laughs> yeah, root against dude. him. That's the only reason. Like, this kid is so much fun. He He's he's the epitome of fun. He's exciting. I mean, he's got all the physical traits. He's as gifted as any human being on planet Earth. Second in pace of play last season at 2.11. I'm going to read off some numbers real quick on Anthony Richardson. He was third in red zone carries per game at 2.0. Yes, really small sample size. You could say Austin. He only played in what, like close to four games. That was it. I get four. it. I understand it. Yeah. Fifth in rushing yards per game at 34 rushing yards. I'll tell you what, man. I bet you. I bet you he runs for more rushing yards per game next season. I feel confident in that. 34 feels low, man. Mm. Uh, and and here's the truth about Anthony Richardson. F- his four starts last season. Week one, 23 fantasy points in his first game ever. He's the QB four. I mean, that's fire, man. I mean, that that's exactly what we want to see right out of the gate. His first game ever. Week two, 17.7 fantasy points. He was the QB 19. Dude, he left in the beginning of the second quarter. Okay. Yeah, I, he could have been Chico. the QB one. He he could have been the QB one overall week two. He comes back week four. He drops thirty three point six points. He's the QB two. Okay, week five he comes. He he he's he gets re injured in week five. He scores four points. He again he leaves early second quarter. You could say Austin durability issues. I'm not going to push back on that. Completely warranted. Fully understand it. I get it. But he's just got to simply stay healthy this season, shut up all the critics, prove everyone wrong. That's what he has to do. Anthony Richardson was on he, – he was borderline unstoppable when he was on the field, at least for fantasy production, right? Uh, and, and hear me out. In the two games that Richardson was healthy, he ranked first in rushing attempts per game at 10 and third in rushing yards per game at, at 48, first in rushing touchdowns per game, 1.5. Again, really small samples. I, I fully understand it. I'm, I'm just giving you the information that I have from, from the games that he played in, right? So all things considered, I believe that he's got a bigger chip on his shoulder than ever. I believe he wants to prove everyone wrong this upcoming season more than ever. I think he, Anthony Richardson legitimately has a chance to break fantasy football in 2024. Casey, am I crazy? Oh no, I, I I love it. Like I said, I think this is a good a good answer for both single quarterback and super flex leagues. So I, th- I thought that was an excellent guy to bring up here. Um, I almost brought up Daniel Jones, but I felt like that was only relevant for super flex. So I tried to keep it yep. you know relevant to super flex here, mostly because I like the value on Jones. But yeah, of course, Anthony Richardson um, seems like a cheat code, regardless of what you think he may or may not be in the NFL, what he's going to do is amass fantasy points, uh, in a hurry. And a lot of them, uh, and, and, you know, the durability stuff, I mean, I, I just, I can't get caught too, too caught up in that. Like he, he got hurt his first year out there, banged up a couple times and then, you know, out for the rest of the season. But I mean, he could, he could play for three, four more years and, and, and not really miss too many games. So let, let's, let's pump the brakes and, and judge that, um, down the road and, and let's see what this season holds but i know i'm very excited for anthony richardson there's not many other game-breaking quarterbacks that have the skill set size speed that that he could he could have and uh all they did was 
Um, add another really fun wide receiver. Josh Downs should grow as a second year receiver. Uh, Michael Pittman is paid and is really good that the offensive line should be continually improving. JT could have a full healthy season. I mean, mm. everything should be on the up and up for the Colts. So I, I really like that, that pick Austin. Who you got in mind, Casey? I'm going to go Zay Flowers. Zay, my okay. name is Zay, my name. <laughs> um, so 104 targets, 77 receptions, 858 yards, five TDs. He was 14th in and 15th in yak per reception, fifth in missed tackles forced with 19. Uh, so some some really strong numbers from his rookie season um, and finished the season really strong, which I think was was a nice little exclamation point is kind of, you know, might hit the rookie wall, might fade. But Zay Flowers continue to get stronger. Um, 20 plus points in his last four out of five games of the regular season. Um, and then he goes into the playoffs and game one, not super strong, but five targets, four receptions, 41 yards. But they beat the Texans pretty handily, 34-10. Uh, and then they comes back in that Chiefs game. And I felt like that was like a real yeah. big coming out party for what Zay Flowers can be. Now, obviously, he has the bonehead taunting thing. And then... Um, then he had the the fumble in the end zone but you know other than that (laughs) he had eight targets five receptions 115 yards and a touchdown like i said he was in line for a second td and then fumbled going into the end zone uh that's good for his value this season you know like i go people probably don't remember that but no but he he was electric there obviously um you know the chiefs had their number that day but he was kind of showcasing all the different parts and pieces that that zay flowers can bring to the table um I get it. You know, people will argue, well, Andrews is there. Check the splits aren't any good. Like, just relax. Likely was there. Likely he's a pretty good player. He's not Mark Andrews. I'm not saying that he is. I'm just saying there was another tight end that was getting some passes and, and catching some touchdowns and, and was being a nice fill-in for Andrews. Andrews also needs to stay healthy uh, and, and be on the field. But also, at the same time, this was Zay Flowers' rookie season. This was also Todd Munkin's rookie season with the with the Ravens. We get, we're going to see some evolution of this system come together. We're going to see an evolution of the wide receiver one for the uh, Baltimore Ravens and that, that that chemistry with Lamar and Zay continue to flourish and grow. I mean, man. Did they bring in? The, nobody, right, right? Nobody. Tez Walker. Uh, they lost Odell. They brought in Tez Walker. Maybe this is the year Rashad Bateman comes to play. Who knows? Um, I would assume that you'll see. I don't know how you can put the genie back in the bottle with likely. you got to <laughs> run likely. And Andrews, I feel like that's a good wrinkle out there. And obviously you have Derrick Henry coming into the fold. But Zay Flowers, I believe that him and and Lamar are just going to continue to have this flourish. Munkin, this was his first year in the league since 19. He was in college for years, a few years at Georgia there. Really crushing, comes back, thought he had a great year, thought he moved this offense forward. And I'm so excited to see what's about to happen in year mm-hmm. two. But really what stood out to me going back and watching some of these are where the off-script plays between Lamar and and flowers and and flowers is the perfect complement for somebody like Lamar with off script plays because he's so fluid and he's so mobile. Uh, he's so sudden. He's so quick. He's so precise. He can do so many things. He's a great route runner on and then on already a really good route runner and with room to improve. And then on top of that, these off script plays with Lamar and a lot of time. Good luck covering Zay Flowers for any more than a few seconds. He's already really tough to handle. You break a play down and Zay Flowers and and Lamar Jackson, I feel like, are just going to be a thing of beauty as they learn how to ad lib together. So, you know, I, I all those things are awesome. Um, I think this gadget player stuff is super silly. I think he's a lot more than that. Actually, the reception perception kind of points to that stuff closer to the line of scrimmage was kind of the worst part of his game. Um, as far as, you know, the success rates and on all that kind of apply to it. Um I think that, again, will continue to grow. Uh, but he was, I want to take a little reception perception and credit to Matt Harmon for everything they do. He's put, got a great product out there. Um, but 85% um, success rate versus zone, which would rank in the 90th percentile of the reception perception database. That's <laughs> outstanding. And Matt made a really good point here in his write-up of that this is, this was a, this is a team that is going to see a ton of zone because who is going to play that much man unless you have the exact right personnel to do so against the Ravens? You don't want to turn your back to him. You want to keep everybody turned around and looking at him. And you have one of the best zone guys already year one out there. He was 71.7% versus man coverage, which is still really good. Um, obviously, you know, some of that closer to the line of scrimmage stuff was probably because he's a little smaller, not 
the best versus press man, but that's something that you can continue to grow with, continue to get better at, continue to learn with. I, I believe you'll see an evolution of that, but I don't, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. There's so many good factors here for where Zay Jones has his game already and the next level he can take it to from what we saw as a, as a rookie, man. He, he's got all the yak. He's got all the route running. Um, so I, I love everything about Zay Flowers. Right now he's being drafted um, currently, I believe five. Let's see here. Five, 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 five. Fifth. So I'll draft him all day long in that range. I love getting Zay Flowers. I'm putting as much Zay Flowers on the team as I can. Zay Flowers, a league mother effing winner. What do you think, Austin? Brother, Casey, great information, real valuable. I'm going to tell you the most important thing about Zay Flowers right now, though. He's got you eight know brothers he's one- and sisters. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was You know say, he man. turned he's- down a six-figure deal in college he- to stay at yes, Boston College. Yes, yes. If you haven't been one listening of- for a while, Jason went with that about every time we went with Zay Flowers when we were breaking down him as a rookie. So that's the One of there. 14 kids, man. Crazy, yeah. crazy. Yeah. I mean, shout out to his uh, his parents, man. God yeah. bless him. God but, bless uh, him. I, I love that. Now, you brought up a lot of good points, and, and I'll, be, I'll be quick. Their second-round pick, Roger Rosengarten. I, I, I thought this was a really good pick, man. Casey, your favorite collegiate team. Shout out to Washington. Mm. 6'5", 308 pounds. You know, I, I think, obviously, Lamar, big winner from this draft. But, but like you mentioned, that being Zay Flowers as well, right? You know, anytime you get a better offensive line, the whole that whole offense, ideally, will be humming. They, they did not prioritize any wide receiver. Yes, they drafted Tez Walker. Fourth round, he was Fourth a day round, three pick, yeah. right? It's it's not like that was a glaring need for for the Baltimore Ravens. Hell, it was a year earlier, and what they do, they took Zay Flowers in the first, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, no, you brought up some really good points, man, and I just I thought that Zay Zay Flowers was quietly a, a winner from this off season. Yeah, love it. Love it. All right, who you got next, Austin? Hey, guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. The next player I'm going to talk about is Rashi Rice. Mm. So, Love man, it. I think people understand that Rashi Rice was was good last year. I think they realized that he was, you know, a... a, a Definitely an above average wide receiver. I don't think they understand just how good he was, though. Who's just being overly faded because in reality, what's he going to get? Four games, six games, right? Like, what's it going to be? It's not going to be, I I don't think it's going to be more than eight. And I'll tell you what, if it's, if it is eight or 10, I don't care in Dynasty. I do not care at all. Hell, man, in redraft, I think it's almost even better because you're going to be able to get him at even more of a discount in your draft. And you know, when he comes back on the field, He's not only going to be the number one wide receiver, I'm telling you he's going to be the number one weapon, the number one option for the Chiefs. Yes, over Travis Kelsey. He did that during his rookie campaign. What? Why wouldn't he do that again? Travis Kelsey, yes, he did sign a new contract a year older. I bet you Rashi Rice has only built up more chemistry, and he's only going to get more confident, man. His, his production, his efficiency, Rashi Rice, that is, was exceptional throughout his rookie campaign. His film, I thought his film's really good, man. And and you know I'm more of an analytical guy, but I I definitely thought like visually he looked like he knew exactly what he was doing. I'm, and I'll tell you what, he was really that good. Rice didn't play seventy percent of snaps until week fourteen. Casey, we've talked about this before. Andy Reid really, really, really wanted to ease him into the lineup, and it was like, man, like this this Chiefs offense was was ugly. They were not good for a while. It's like. You, you just – you got to use him more. You, you, they should have used him earlier, and yes, they ended up winning the Super Bowl. So, hey, what do I know? Clearly, that Andy Reid guy knows what he's doing. I'm, I'm just saying I would have liked to see Rashi Rice on the field more earlier during his rookie season. I, it, all things considered, I guess I guess it didn't matter because they won the Super Bowl, but Rashi Rice still balled out. Uh, he had – he was uh, – I'll rip off a few numbers on him that really stuck out to me. Everybody loves to see that. 2.00 yards per out run, right? That's a really good number. Well, he had 2.21 as a rookie. That was 15th in the NFL. He only I had three. I'm at 2.39 tenth overall. So you have him at 2.39 yards, yards per, per out, out run. run. Yeah. 
Um, you know what? Mine may be including the playoffs oh, as okay. well. Yeah. That's I, I apologize. I should have no, mentioned all good. that. I just I was looking um, at the same thing. That's the only reason I know that name yep. off the top of my head. Yep. A two point eight percent drop rate. So we had three drops this season. One hundred and thirty one targets. I, dude, that's phenomenal. That that is exactly what we want to see. He was first in the NFL in yak. That that includes the playoffs. Let me be clear. But to do that as a rookie, I, dude, that's that, that's it's just stupid. Eight hundred fifty three. Yeah. It was more than obviously. It was more than everybody in the NFL. But he just edged out Amon Ross St. Brown. Mm-hmm. He was ninth in the NFL in receptions at one hundred five. Jason, don't say it. I know what you're up to. It was <laughs> it was ninth in the NFL in receiving touchdowns. Uh, it just, I mean. Man, what 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 a rookie season for him, and it was in a, in a very limited role. So, just yeah. shout out to Rocky Rice, man. Go go buy him now. There's there's GMs out there that are panicking. Yeah, they're they're still out there. Go for buy. Sure. It's a reactionary league. It's a short term uh, mindset with most dynasty players. It's like they're playing redraft. You mm-hmm. saw the progression of him getting better throughout the year, right? Earning that playing time, and then and then coming into into his own, looking like he did in college, like like you said with the yak, just extremely explosive with the ball in his hands. There, manufacturing him touches. He was finding the way his way into the end zone and really coming through in the clutch for them. And I will say though, I don't think you can take him in redraft because you can't hold him that long. Like he's going to be suspended. You got to yeah, I mean, scoop it, him up. It, it'll depend. It seems waiver. like it, it's going to end up being less than more for suspensions. And, but. and I don't know. He has had a bad off season. I don't know that he's grown in confidence. And you know, like it, he might have been shook by this a little bit. It's a lot of negative exposure. A lot of probably a lot of criticism. Everybody's just. I'll tell you who hasn't. I'll tell you police. who hasn't wavered. The owner. He's over there. At, at the White House with the owner's yeah, daughter. His He's, daughter's. I, Rashi's rice confidence has not wavered. I guarantee it. Like, he, hopefully he learned from what had ha- what happened. He needs to learn. The confidence, I can tell you, is not rattled by Rashi. There's no way. Like, come on, man. Like, he's he, he's going to be straight. Like, well, yeah. yeah. Well, then you got you got to buy him. Yak per, yak per route. Ru- yak per reception, 8.3. Only second to Debo Samuel. And then that 2.39 yards per route run. Fantastic. Those are great numbers. Great indicators of, of some future success. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, you just we just talked about Andy Reid bringing Rashi along slowly like rookies are are typically going to get brought along slowly with Andy Reid. So Xavier Worthy might have a little slow start mm-hmm. there. So, you know, even even if Rashi gets suspended, he's going to come right back. And I think he's going to come come back with a strong uh, role on this team and, and at least be one B at the very worst, um, you know, to Travis Kelsey. But, um, you know, Marquis. Obviously, adding him, I think, will take away some of what uh, Rashi Rice does. But I think Worthy and Hollywood are there to help get the vertical game back um, where Rashi was a little bit more of a, a closer line of the scrimmage manufacturer um, yak kind of guy. So I love it. I love that. buy. That's it. That, that should be everybody's number one thing to do right now is go buy Rashi Rice. If there is any wavering owners in any of your leagues that are willing to sell uh, for uh, under market. So I, I, I love that. Casey, can I can I say one final thing? Go I ahead. forgot to mention. Uh, this is this is what surprised me. I, I I didn't mention this. Patrick Mahomes and Rashi Rice had really incredible chemistry right out of the gate. Uh, and again, that you know, I mentioned he he did not really take off till later in the season. He was he didn't play much till till later in the season. Rashi Rice ranked first in percentage of targets caught at eighty point two. Okay, so. That, that shows you the chemistry w- was absolutely there. Yes, he did have a lower A dot. I get it. But, but hey, doing that as a rookie, wildly impressive. Again, 80.2% of his passes he caught. The next closest in the NFL was Adam Thielen all the way down at 75.7. So, like, mm. pretty pretty big yeah. gap right there. Yeah. He's a dog. He's a dog. A dot drink. Right. We're gonna go, I want to go right to another dog. Uh, and he was a Georgia <laughs> Bulldog. Yeah. Uh, we're going George Pickens here as the next league wiener. We're going to save the rookies for the end. We're going to talk some rookies, mm-hmm. but we, we got two rookies for your pleasure. Um, but wanted to hit some veterans first off. And I think George Pickens is another one of those guys who's just ready to explode, right? He had 104 targets this year, second year in the league, 63 receptions, 1,140 yards, five touchdowns, 18.1 in yards uh, per reception, that was number one. Whew. Uh, 2.11 in yards per route run, that was 17th and 7th in yak per reception. Uh, we saw the route tree grow a little bit. Uh, we saw the separation. Nazis, there. Nazis come out and kind of be silenced this offseason. There's not nearly as much George Pickens hate and not nearly as much George Pickens 
Um, thanks to a strong finish with Mason Rudolph. Right, a good Just chucking it. A good deep. strong finish with him. Uh, now you've had you've lost Deontay Johnson in this uh, offense, and you've replaced him with absolutely nobody. You know that was a ode to uh, Conor McGregor there. Um, you do have you brought in Roman Wilson, who's a rookie. You got Calvin Austin. I don't even know who some of the other guys on the depth chart are. are. I don't think they're super duper relevant at this point. And maybe maybe, they, maybe I'll eat my words on that. But it just seems like George Pickens is going to leap into that target hog range in the 25% of target share kind of deal here. Uh, they're talking about Arthur Smith kind of maybe he, they're, they're practicing him in the slot a little more. Uh, so you can move this guy around. He can be your prototypical X out there for sure. He's shown he can do that. Uh, but you get him in the slot. You get him on linebackers. You get him on those mismatches. You get him over the middle. Um, and you get him a, a quarterback who can hit him when he needs to be hit. Uh, which, you know, go, going vicinity. back and, and watching some of it, you know, which I did before this, um, you know, Kenny made some good throws and Kenny made some bad throws. Uh, but George Pickens was absolutely outstanding. Uh, he's, he's gives you that big body. Just put it in the vicinity. He sh yeah, he, he showed that he can run a bunch of different routes and be successful at them. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very intrigued to see the Arthur Smith usage. And I know it's trendy to hate Arthur Smith, but I, I think our, this Arthur Smith offense with, with what the Steelers have and where they are, I think it sets up really well for what, what, with what and how Arthur Smith is going to operate. Double and, hate. And let's not forget, we love to forget how good Arthur Smith was back in the day with, with Tennessee um, and, and Tannehill. Uh, they, they, they were a very, very good, efficient offense. I think, I, think we can get, I think we can get the Steelers back there to a, being a very efficient offense. We know they're going to run the ball a decent amount, uh, but I think George Pickens is going to be, be their guy and be hot and heavy. There's going to be a ton of targets for him. He's going to score. He's a red zone threat. He can score from really anywhere on the field. He's excellent uh, just be running the straight nine, which is what everybody criticized him for after the rookie year. But he can. He showed he can do a lot more on outbreaking, inbreaking curls, a, a whole bunch of different stuff. So I think George Pickens, uh, everything kind of improved in, in a lot of areas for, for George. And I think we're going to see one more big step here. You know, the only problem we've ever had with Pickens is Pickens, right? It's it's himself. Mm -hmm. It's the, the same same thing with it was like Deontay Johnson. What what kind of maximum effort are we going to get from this guy? And if we can get maximum effort from Pickens, you know, week in week out without any any of the pouty shit and and hey, I'm not getting the ball, which I, I think he's going to get fed a plenty here, uh, and I think deservedly so. I think I think he can be one of those top tier uh, wide receivers with, with volume and top and, and do a lot with the volume. I think he's, he's ready and able to do so. His ADP currently is at six, six for the, uh, FFD ADP. That's very, very palatable. He seems gettable still. I would trade a late first, uh, for, for George Pickens for any of those all rookies day. that are kind of coming in the worthies, mm -hmm. the lads, the BTs, you know, obviously I'm going to take Rome, a Dunze still, but other than that, you know, I would take pretty much all the other wide receivers. You take Rome. Um, and then I, yeah. And then I would, I would add s some to it. If I, you know, Pickens plus, you know, something to, to get me a next year's second or something, maybe to even uh, a first and a next year's second to, to maybe secure Pickens. Maybe I get a third back or something, but I think George Pickens could be a huge, huge problem in the league this year with a lot of volume and a, and a league winner for you. So Casey, George Pickens or Zay Flowers in Dynasty? Mm. Two go totally Zay. different operators. You gotta go Zay. Um, George Pickens certainly profiles more for the guy who could be that that dog number one elite of yep. the elite. Um, so it's hard to not necessarily say if I had to pick one to you can really get them both fifth elevate. And sixth round. Sure, to really elevate to that big dog level, I would say it's him. But you know, we're in a different era of the league. Of, of you know, small kings can can flourish too. Uh, so let's. All right, fine, fine. I'm 127. Let's uh, let's go. I'm gonna give George Pickens slight edge, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I, I, my heart says, my heart says, I say go flowers. Zay. Yeah. I got uh, I got Pickens wide receiver 23, and I have Zay Flowers two spots below him wide receiver 25. So I'm I'm with you, man. We see eye to eye. But I, I'm happy that you brought up George Pickens, right? I, another, I think, big winner from the draft, right? That being Troy Fayetano, the offensive tackle, first round pick. Man, the Steelers love prioritizing their offensive line over the past two years. Uh, I think Pittsburgh's done a good job 
really just building this roster and let me rip off a few notable wide receivers through their first two seasons, like Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, Stephon Diggs, Tyree Kill, Keenan Allen. What if I told you George Pickens has more receiving yards than all of those guys through their first two seasons? And he did that with Mason Rudolph, uh, Mitch Trubisky, Kenny Pickett. Makes it even more impressive, man. Yeah. Now he has Russ or Fields, Deontay gone, obviously 140 plus targets through the past four years. And all why doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, that's how it works, man. Why don't people talk about his durability? George Pickens has played 35 consecutive games to start his career, 100% healthy. I just, Casey, if I could wrap it up with one thing, it's the age 22 season, 1,140 yards with Mason Rudolph, Mitch Trubisky, Kenny Pickett. Like, like, it, it, is there anything else that you need to know? How, how can you not be in on this player after just that sentence alone? Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, right. and and to answer your question, I have I have flowers and pickens in the same tier in my rankings. It's a big tier, um, but okay. I, I got them in the, I got them in the same tier there. All right, Austin, who's your next player? Who's who's your rookie? Let's go. My rookie. Let's finish up let's, with the rooks. Yeah, let's talk about a running back in Trey Benson. I think he's starting to get more love. I I think people were very in on him. Obviously, after the NFL Combine, he was he was a massive winner. Right, kind of fell a little bit in the draft. Fell to the early third round. Some things that, that cross my mind when I think of Trey Benson for dynasty purposes. You got James Conner, who is an unrestricted free agent after this season. Man, you have to pay attention to contracts w- when you play dynasty. Like redraft, different story. But but dynasty, man, contracts really matter, especially for running backs. James Conner could be gone. Maybe they extend it, man. James Conner's been balling now for a few years. With I mean, he's been balling for, for more than that. But, you know, at least with the Cardinals, he's been, you know, he just put together over a thousand rushing yards great season from him uh, but i don't know i thought it was telling i thought it was interesting that they spent a day two pick on J- on um, trey benson i think that the cardinals definitely needed another running back regardless and arizona last season they finished fourth in rushing yards not bad trey benson six foot 216 king sizest over here you know i'm not mad about it yeah four three nine forty time the speed you know it's so funny, man. I, I didn't think he looked quite that fast when I was watching some of their games, watching the tape at FSU. I didn't think he looked at like 439, 97th percentile. But hey, man, he crushed at the combine and, you know, good for him. Good for Trey Benson. 1,100 plus yards this season, 15 total touchdowns. He had a he had a great season at FSU. I mean, they had a lot of big dogs over there. Right? FSU was exciting to watch this season. Uh, he's 21 years old. He's had 20 plus receptions. All the analytical nut jobs going to be happy about that one. Myself just included. Over the, uh, just over the threshold. <laughs> yeah, threshold literally. No. Uh, Six point one career yards per carry, dude. That's not bad at all. And uh, Casey, I'll uh, I'll wrap it up with this, man. Trey Benson ranks first all time in PFF elusive rating. This was twenty twenty two. Okay, at two hundred and twenty six point six. And I want to remind everybody, he tore his ACL the prior season. OK, so for him to come back and and just, you know, over 40 percent of his career touches resulted in a missed tackle force. Trey Benson was just absurdly evasive, man. Um, I I think that Trey Benson will take over this backfield eventually. I think I, I don't think it's a question. It's it's inevitable. It just it's it's a matter of when. Um, and man, it could be week eight. It could be twenty twenty five. Uh, it, we don't necessarily know, but I thought it again. I thought it was telling that Arizona spent a day to pick on Trey Benson. I think they did that absolutely for a reason. Um, so, I mean, this offense is going to be humming, man. Obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr., Kyler Murray, you know, Michael Wilson, the goat. This is this is exciting, man. If you're if you're a Cardinals fan, how can you not be pumped up for the season? Yeah, I like I like I like Trey Benson. He could really come on strong here at the end of the season. Connor's been having a little trouble staying healthy he's been very good uh went out there which is cool let, let, let my guy come in and learn from a from a consummate pro here uh but i think trey benson is going to you know take over he's he's certainly going to get carries this year will he get will he be the the one right off the rip maybe it's maybe it's jc uh but i think uh as time grows on as the season grows on benson's role will grow and grow so i thought that was a good point for league winners there as time um, grows on I think uh, I really I really like the choice of, of Trey Benson there. I, I had a couple of choices. I had I had Jonathan Brooks on there for same kind of reason. End of the season, maybe really getting mm-hmm. stronger and stronger. Uh, had Ladd in there for potential just volume and just a crafty uh, 
route runner there just getting peppered with targets but inevitably i thought you know a guy who i've wavered on i've gone back and forth on i've i've um you know maybe he's gotten pushed down and a lot of the rookie drafts he's certainly gotten pushed down i'm through a decent amount of rookie drafts at this point i got more in august but brian thomas jr man uh he was he was you know maybe maybe wide receiver four for everybody and it just seems like it's it's been melting down um and i'm seeing him two one through two 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 three uh now that jonathan brooks has jumped up there for some people um i see him top of the second round a lot him kind of getting the uh, being kind of the odd man out there uh, but brian thomas really lands in a spot uh in jacksonville that's that's you know really really good for his skill set you you remove calvin ridley from that situation who Give had him all those targets a ton of targets last year i don't i don't know the exact number i could look that up real quick 136 136 <laughs> all going to brian thomas <laughs> so obviously clearly they're not all going to go to brian thomas but brian thomas fits the role that they were jamming calvin ridley into so much better than what calvin ridley does and how he operates and we know that brian thomas may not have a fully defined route tree at this particular juncture but he has a, he's got size weight speed um, and we know he can win those verticals and we know they just they ran, they ran a lot of verticals and smashed the freaking uh digs overs crossers uh with with brian thomas and he's hell with the ball in his hands he can he i think he's a really good mover for his size um so you know of course gabe davis is probably gonna check in here and there and have a big game and ruin you know some brian thomas brian thomas will probably be spotty through there but there's going to be weeks where you got to plug brian thomas in and he's going to have monster games for you um and when you pull up this uh reception perception uh chart for trevor lawrence i mean my god he was outstanding in the deep routes deep and intermediates like absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic um so you pair that with what Brian Thomas' skill set is. And like I said, I think they were jamming a square peg into a round hole with Calvin Ridley. I think Calvin Ridley is a really good player, but I think you needed to move him around a little bit more, a um, little closer to the line of scrimmage. Sh certainly can get you on the deep stuff, but Brian Thomas, you're going to put that big body out there and you're going to run him down the field. He's got really late, good, plucky hands uh, where Trevor Lawrence was l leading the league, had to have, and, and just drop touchdown passes um and a lot of drops where trevor put it where it needed to be and as it was, was trevor excellent all year no but what trevor is really good at and what this uh illustration is showing you with uh the reception perception here and, and what you can kind of find out there is is trevor was absolutely outstanding with the deep and intermediate stuff people do not want to hear that he was no like, they uh, whatever that's they fine. think he's mediocre at best that's okay um but Cl clamps and Go Tigers. Uh, that's okay. He, you can think he's mediocre at best. He's paid, um, and he's not going anywhere. And uh, all I can say to that is, y'all are just caught up in that you thought he was going to be this generational quarterback and he's going to be QB1. He's a good quarterback, man. And the Jaguars are winning with him. That's the fucking stat that matters. They're winning mm -hmm. with him. They were. I don't know how long y'all have been watching football or how long y'all have been paying attention, but they have been terrible horrible one year with like blake bortles bordelais and then some mark brunel years back in the day uh when Lefty. they first came into the league with fred taylor uh you know um so J trevor lawrence has changed the culture in jack and jacksonville and has played really really well um up to this point maybe not up to Maybe he's not Patrick Mahomes, but he's 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 won some games for him. He's got him in playoffs. He's come back in playoffs, um, and they were they were ready to go to the playoffs again this last year and had an epic collapse with a lot of injuries, including some to Trevor. So I think Brian Thomas really fits this role for them. They really I feel like that was they they really nailed it with exactly what they're trying to do. Now they don't have to switch anything up. They can do what they were doing with Calvin Ridley, uh, with Brian Thomas, getting it down the field. There'll be a little Gabriel. Uh, in there and he'll ruin some days like I said but I really really think Brian Thomas could be end up being a really big part to your league as your season goes on you're missing guys you're injured you got bye weeks you see a chemistry kind of growing as the season goes on with Brian Thomas kind of like we talked about Zay Flowers to lead this thing off with um, and I think I think Brian Thomas just is a really good fit for the role uh, that they're going to need him to play as a rookie. Yeah, I need to update this ADP because he's at 110 right now. I feel like he's fallen. He's the one that's been obtainable in the yeah. early, late, early second round. Yeah, 2-1, two, 2-2. Two, two, in everyone else's defense, 
Trevor makes some boneheaded, terrible mistakes that you just can't do. He's got to clean that up. But he does work hard, and he does get better, and he's still really young. He might not be the brightest. He makes some dumb mistakes. And those things are like they, they reside in your mind. It's hard to forget just straight fumbling. Like when, no one touched you. You just fumbled it, bro. Like, shit happens, Throw some man. terrible interceptions. Shit like, happens. Just killing me. But still, really talented. Working really hard, a lot of success, plays banged up, missed his first game of his career ever, and he probably should have sit. He, he should probably sit some more. Like he, he's clearly uh, impaired by his injuries sometimes, but he powers through because he he wants to be out there for his guys. So a huge buy, Trevor Lawrence for sure. Go Tigers, Casey. Let, let me just be clear. I'm not perfect, man. You you mentioned how many targets does Calvin Ridley had, and the fact that I knew it was exactly 136 right away. I, I can't remember what my girlfriend said to me four seconds ago. I, again, I'm not perfect, but uh, I love this. I love this Brian Thomas take, man. He was second fastest 40 time, 4 3 3. And you, you can't put BTJ against single coverage. Last season, he had over 500 yards and seven touchdowns on just 29 targets. Okay. So. He's, he's going to burn you, man. 81%, 82.1% success rate on slants, 82.9% success rate on curls, and 85.7% success rate on outs. And he had to earn these targets playing with Malik Neighbors at LSU. So, I mean, you brought up a lot of valid points, man. It's Why why would it not be wheels up for Brian Thomas Jr.? Was he not drafted to be the wide receiver one? I, lo- I really, really like Christian Kirk. I'm, I'm well, a big advocate gonna, of his Christian team. Kirk is going to be the wide receiver one as far as volume Correct. and targets. Uh, Correct. I, I agree with you for this season, but I think long-term, man, I really think that Brian Thomas Jr., it's kind of like his job for the taking. I mean... I, I think he checks so many boxes. I, I'm a big fan of him. And the fact that he's widely considered the wide receiver four in this class, it just shows you how good this class is. Yeah, I would, I would like I said, I think at this point now I, I'm seeing, I see Ladd, I see Worthy, um, mm-hmm. and, I, and I see um, Brooks all kind of go ahead of him time after time. So he, he a lot of the time is the guy who kind of falls out and, and is probably the most attainable out of the rookies right now that's slipping a little bit so you get you know that's usually when you want to pounce and I, I i just to me i just really like the role that he can be thrust right into and calvin right. really taken out of and i think it's just a, such a better fit um for if they don't change anything which i can't imagine they were i think it's a better fit like i said there's a there's a potential limited route tree and a learning curve which there should be on some rookies but he he has like you said this the, the height and the speed to get you on those vertical routes and, and good luck um you know containing him with with single single coverage uh on the outside there so um that's my that's our last league winner be sure to like subscribe comment below make sure you go follow austin at austin abbott ff it's two b's two t's two f's uh we appreciate you guys check us out on the on the discords on the uh patreon five dollar holler over there you get three extra episodes a a month we got a little rookie kit over there um we got rankings about to we'll we'll drop a podcast um but we are we're we're working on the getting the actual dynasty rankings updated i need an update for um rookie rankings and then we will have an adp update really soon we're mocking mocking it up all the time over there we're getting questions answers we're doing roster reviews we got a partnership coming up with with player profiler we got a partnership coming up with um dynasty daddy so a lot of fun stuff there on the roster reviews and and roster building and and so much so much good stuff coming so keep it locked and loaded with us go check out austin abbott's uh podcast there fade consensus make sure you're locked and loaded on that and we'll catch you next time peace peace